Yes, it is Millie in between, but not as you know it. Because I'm here. I've left the CBBC office to come and give you guys the skinny on everything you need to know about one of your favourite shows. For 12 weeks this summer, Millie has been doing it all again. Along with a team of 58 people, she's hard at work filming Series 2. And guess what? She's invited me to come along and see how they do it. We'll meet the cast. It's really all glamour. We'll meet the crew. Action! We're going to see what happens when things don't quite go according to plan. And we're going to spend a whole day with Millie behind the scenes. Sorry, I am literally never awake this early. Anyway, this hotel is home away from home for Millie Innes when she is filming. Yes, that's right, her name actually is Millie and she's about to begin her working day. Hello? Good morning, Millie. It's that time again. OK. Bye. We asked what you wanted to know about Millie in between and you have sent us literally hundreds of questions. So now that she's had a chance to wake up, I think it's time we got some answers. Amethyst Brainy Cat, along with others, wanted to know, when did you decide to become an actor? It all started for me when I was about three and um, one day I was sitting on the sofa watching Tracy Beaker on the TV, sandwiched in between my mum and dad, and I said, I'm going to be in a show like that. Millie actually got the chance to work with her childhood heroine, Danny Harmer, when she was only nine. On my first day of Danny's house, I was freaking out. I was so excited because I'd watched this show for years. Like, little nine-year-old me was all excited. I kind of got over being a bit starstruck after about the first week, and then we all just became a massive family. Working with the person who first inspired her was a big deal for Millie but there was more inspiration to come. I think the most inspirational person I've worked with would have to be Jason Isaacs, who's known for Harry Potter and Peter Pan and stuff. I was in Case Histories with him, and it's a series based on books by Kate Atkinson. It's a BBC drama, so he taught me loads, and a lot of like my work ethic now is to do with him. I always have to remember that when I'm filming, it is a job. It's not a hobby, it is fun but we always have to get the scenes done. Blush Happy Farmer wanted to know, who looks after you when you're away filming? Jackie Green is my chaperone and tutor. Um, she's basically the person that looks after me and is there for me 24 seven when I'm on set. Um, she's like my second mum when I'm away filming. The role of a chaperone really is to make sure that the children are looked after properly. That includes where they're staying, how many hours they work, to make sure that they get their adequate tuition and that they're very happy. The studio is just a short walk from Millie's hotel. It's still really early. They haven't even had their breakfast yet, but Millie and co aren't the only early birds. The makeup and wardrobe teams have to get the cast ready for the first scene of the day. Right, has anyone noticed there isn't actually any wardrobes in here? Like seriously, not even one. And I need to shave because I'm a real man. So I'll do that. Then I'll get changed into my costume, have some breakfast, go on set, and produce the magic. It's all go getting bedheads tamed before the actors hit the studio floor. The makeup department, the perfect opportunity to gather some more intel and get the answers to some of your questions. Lots of you asked what's the best thing about being an actor? Uh, the best things about being an actor are being able to play a character and truly lose yourself through performing and getting to meet and work with such wonderful people. It's honestly the only job I could ever see myself doing and I love it with all my heart. Another popular question was, is Millie like her character? Some nights when I look at the scenes for the next day, I see a scene and I understand where Millie's coming from completely, whether it's a piece to Millie cam or she's just doing a scene by herself, or if it's a scene with Lauren, like, in particular, I find that really easy to play because I know what Millie's feeling or how to understand what she's saying. And she's got a new necklace, which is, like, my favourite thing in the whole wide world. Says Millie with three glasses on. Oh. While the cast are getting their cozies and makeup on, there's loads more going on behind the scenes. Let's take a trip to the engine room to meet the people who keep this show on the road. Round here, they're called production. 
There's so much organisation behind a show like this, and here is where it all happens. Whether you need cast, crew, equipment, scripts, transport, they'll sort it. And if the director absolutely has to have a pink elephant, then production will do their very best to find one. If there's a pink elephant with an agent, then we get into negotiation. Uh, and then we have to work out uh, how much the pink elephant costs and exactly uh, how we're going to get it into the studio. Seriously though, it takes so much organisation to get this show into production and keep it running smoothly. There is nothing left to chance. All over the studio complex, the team is working to a carefully worked out timetable, so everything will be ready when the actors arrive on the studio floor. And today, I get to join them. Come on, we've just got time for a sneak peek on set before the cameras roll. Even though it might look it, none of this is real. Somebody had to imagine Millie's world and then create it completely from scratch. Okay, so welcome to Millie's mum's house and this is actually the set of the upstairs bit. And this is Millie's bedroom that she shares with Lauren, of course. And it's amazing. It actually just looks like any teenager's bedroom. Millie's diary. I don't know if I'm allowed to touch this, but I've just gone for it. Shouldn't look at that, it's pretty private. I like that we've got a fictional band up on the wall there called the Temper Hearts. Unless they're a real band and I'm not cool enough to know them. Maybe they are. The attention to detail in these sets are absolutely incredible. There is just so much stuff. Something which I really love is um, the photos all around the set. So that's baby Lauren, which is actually baby Tallulah from when she was really, really little. How cute is her hair? OK, let's uh, have a look what's downstairs. Nothing. There's nothing down here. Just, just a set. Right, guys, just give me a second, because I just need to use the toilet. All right, I'll be What? Don't use the toilet. What? It's not real. <gasps> oh, that could have been embarrassing. OK, guys, here's the clock. Thank you. Everyone on the floor, please. Dario, send me the cast straight away. And now it's time for me to go to set. <laughs> Hi, Good are morning, you? everybody. Hi, Jay. How you doing? What's up, Dan? Ever wondered what someone means when they're saying they're calling the shots? Well, you're about to find out. Des, the director, is breaking the scene down. He explains what each shot will be, what the actors are doing, and what the crew should prepare for. You just appear right in shot, yeah? It should be wide enough to see her go to the bed. Everyone then gets a chance to rehearse before the cameras roll for real. Go out with you, loser. Rock on. OK, so, Millie for Mike's, please. Thank you very much. Let's set for that now, please. Thank you. The rest was great. And again, Get right in before you go. A day. You're still saying it on the move. Actually, <laughs> right in. It's a cut point Sorry. thing. It Thank bad. you. Now the director has given his feedback. Let's see how the take goes. Okay, take one. First scene of the day. And action. Okay. Ooh, double chin prop. What's the matter? If you must know, it's Fran. She set me up on a date. On a date! With a boy! The director keeps a careful eye on every aspect of the scene. <laughs> and if anything isn't right, they have to do it all over again. And you're welcome. OK, I'm going to cut. I'm going to go one more time, please. Can you do yeah. Uh, can we this in dramas, down? like Million Between, the actors have to do the scene over and over and over again. That is to make sure that it is Perfect. Cerise Whizzing Rose asked, is the director very strict? I think the director has to be um, to get everything done, to get all the scenes done um, by the end of the day, but Des isn't too strict. Shh. Only sometimes. Don't say that. Don't no, say he's that. not. <laughs> Just say that. I am strict. I am strict. Yeah, you are. I'm yeah, strict yeah. in a nice way. In a not a strict way. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Here we go then. Action! I wonder what Jake's doing today. I might give him a call. Cut. Thank you. Much better. Thank yeah, well done. That went well. But you know what? It doesn't always go that smoothly. 
I'll get Mike and Craig out of the way and then we can get Miss Nope out of here. <laughs> Do you know what? I think I'm going to go for a walk. Fine. <laughs> totally missed me. <laughs> I shall have to shatter it with the power of my mouth. Goes, I'm just gonna scout out over here, you know, just check it out a little. You know, everyone. Can you just stop giving me that attitude, please? Here, I've got you these. Sorry. <laughs> Ninja. That didn't work. Mm -hmm. Hello, Justin. <laughs> Sorry. <I'm not> done. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do say you should never speak with your mouth full. Another popular question was, what's the best thing about being on Million Between? Boom! The best thing about being an actor on Million Between would probably be everyone on set. Everyone's just really amazing. Right, guys, nice and quiet now. My special starter, Tower of Salad. Being able to see yourself on TV, it's kind of like, wow, I did that. It's a lot of hard work, but it's fun at the same time. Like the experience and the people who you meet, Millie, Maya, Tallulah. All the crew on this know each other really well, and obviously for most of the cast, it's a second year running, so like I go and see films with Theo and Hannah, or I've gone bowling with Jeremy, or you know, we've had like a few nights around at Richard's and that sort of thing where we've all had food together. OK, time for some Millie in between stats. How many lights do you think there are between Mum's house and Dad's flat? 68 plus 12, that's 102 over there. Do you know what? It's 200. I didn't really count them all. The lighting director told me. How many cups of tea and coffee will the crew drink during the shoot? That would be 8,640. You're welcome. Do you know how many breakfast lunches will be eaten during Series 2? Yes, Lauren. Yes, I do. Looked into that for you. Great. Turns out it's uh, 5,759. Wow. Lunch. I'm about to make that 5,760. That's lunch then, and you so don't want to see Theo eating, believe me. So, let's take a look instead at something that happened earlier this week when Million Between went on location. Everything from the studio had to be carefully transported here. Lights, cameras, monitors, makeup, costume, props, and sound equipment. It's died. Cut. The crew faced many challenges while filming an episode in the woods. Forget it! Great, if you fall down and break both your legs, don't you come running to me! Just look at what they had to do to get one simple shot of Theo up a tree. Stand by. Action! You sort it out. Isn't that an ant's nest up there? <laughs> <laughs> Got ya! Cut. Let's go back to the studio for another one of your questions. So, loads of you guys wanted to know what I do when I'm not in front of the camera. Well, you'll never guess where I'm going next. This is my school away from school, so I don't get let off easy when I'm away filming. I need to keep up with my schoolwork. Let's go over again, Robert Louis Stevenson. Millie's chaperone Jackie has two jobs on this show. She's also the on-set tutor for all of the younger actors, making sure they keep up with the schoolwork too. Children can be on set for nine and a half hours. Four and a half hours of that can be in front of camera, and then we have to give them three hours tuition every single day. At a film set, it's really not a holiday. They have to cover their English, their maths, their science, their geography, history. Everything that they're doing at school, they also do here. So, so when they go back, they just slot in and become a part of their school again. And speaking of learning things, there are a few tips I want to pick up from Richard, who plays Millie's on-screen dad. So, Richard, I've heard that you're a bit of an air guitar hero. Air guitar king of rock. Really? Can I be the queen of rock? Do you want the secrets? I want all the secrets. Step this way. Yes. We're going to do the windmill. 
Put your part. Okay. You need a bit of space. You don't take someone out behind you. Don't want to do that. And round. Yes. Whoa, yes. whoa, yes. whoa, whoa. Good girl. Yeah, I like it. Second move, the caveman, the uh -huh. cavewoman. You get one down on the guitar and way. After three, one, two, three. <laughs> way. And finally, oh. Queen of Rock, I salute you. Yeah. The hot. Are okay. you ready? Okay. What's the windmill, a caveman, and out. Right. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> caveman. So a lot yes. of our fans yes. want to know what age we all were when we started acting. Okay. So what age were you? I I, um, I was about 16 when it first occurred to me. It was something that I wanted to do. I had a very good drama teacher at school who really helped me develop. And I went to drama school at 18, came out when I was 21 and worked ever since. And that was about two years ago. <gasps> <laughs> How old are you? I was two. No, how old are oh, you now? I'm 12. I was 12. My first big thing was with the National Youth Music Theatre. And did it for years with them and loved it. So it's very much come from a theatre background and I just loved it. 12 years old. What were you doing at two? Pampers ads? No, I was doing... Um, That's not acting. Absolutely fabulous. You're not acting at two. I, I You're doing... just running around. <laughs> we all want to know who is the funniest person on set? Hello, hello. I'm number one because I've got watermelons on my shirt. Canals, they float my boat. <laughs> Nail it. Come on! Oh, comedy, go! I don't know. Just, Who's the funniest? Just speak your word, just say the truth. Hi, Theo. Oh, thank Who's you. Who's the funniest? Do -do 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 -do. It's great, should have been there. Do -do. I think that uh, Craig is one of the funniest characters in the series, absolutely. Craig takes off the mic. He so... takes off the mic, yeah. All a bit of that, very slow, and then a bit manic at times. Oh, oh, I've one. done some sketches for the kids' outfits. Oh, We set up so we'll sit in the same way, we'll move the same way, just to show that we've got that father and son time. We actually put a lot of work, we, <laughs> we do, we actually do, don't we? <laughs> uh. But sometimes it's funny when it's not meant to be. Action! No way! <laughs> oh. <laughs> and... Up. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not a one with schools. Every time I go in one, I feel reminded of a... And I'm not a one with... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one with your lines, <laughs> Let me bring up my tactical teacher spreadsheet. <laughs> you have a teacher spreadsheet. And <laughs> uh, action. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, how could you mess it up? I did. I mean, it's unbelievable. Dad used to think it was cute. Why are you putting ketchup on a cracker? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Look, he even has a thing. Can I go from something? It was you, the one that wouldn't That's let me have so it. appalling. Why are you she's just, like, talking to me? Like, I'm not... I'm just, I'm... I you was. It's you yeah. were. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, hey, I'm sorry. I'm just not used to getting up that early. Anyway, if they were a real family, this is where they'd watch TV together. Imagine if they were real and Millie in Between was still on the TV. You know, and uh, they were all sat around, like, watching it. Oh, this sofa is comfy. Meanwhile, in Glasgow, the Whittle family is watching its favourite show. And tonight, it's all about young love. Oh, can we watch this? I quite like this show. Nice peg tail. No one can ever see this. This is, uh, this is Justin. He's money, money. Oh, he looks like a young Michael Bubbles. He's got lovely hair. Do you think I'd sort of flinch? Nice to meet you all. Oh, rabbit in the headlights. There she goes again. Will someone please just tell her that boys are not the answer? Well, that depends on the question. You see, there's nothing wrong with the concept of boyfriends. They were very big in the 60s. Boyfriends? boyfriends? Yeah. I had lots and lots. She means flanges. Oh. Key could be much more your style. I mean, look at his room. So over here I've got my bed. <laughs> yeah, the whole looking like a bed thing was a giveaway. I just kind of lay here and... Uh... Sleep. Are those plates heavy? 
Mm. Oh, well, I should open up some windows, let some fresh air in, sitting around on your face pads all day. Can't be hygienic. That boy needs a healthy hobby. <laughs> like cross-country running. Or hill walking. Or... or Bell ringing! Ding dong! Ding dong! Ding dong! What a family! Ding dong! Ding Lauren? <laughs> Lauren? Hi. Lauren? Lauren. Lauren! No, you're Lauren. We need the sofa for the next scene. Mm. Well, that was a weird dream. I am so tired. But look at all this lot. They're still working. It's very busy. There's still lots to do today. But I did manage to grab a quick chat with Millie and Maya between scenes. So, guys, how's today going? It looks amazing. Well, today's been really good. Yeah, it's been quite busy for me because this morning I ran four scenes back to back and there was toast and blocking and it was all very hectic, but we got it done. And what's it like for you two? Because obviously in the first series, you two were kind of brand new, didn't know each other that well. What's it like now? We are besties. We're best friends. This is just so <laughs> sweet. I love it. Yeah. Loads of you wanted to know what these young actors miss when they're away filming. I miss everyone that I know, like my friends my, and my family. Oh, and my dog. She counts as my family, though. I think the person in my family that I miss the most is my little brother, Oscar, who's two, because whenever I go home, he's, like, he's always saying, my, my, I love you, and, like, he's, he's just so cute and I miss him so much. It's been a really, really long day, but finally they are shooting their last scene. And action! Well, don't take it now. We're eating. Opal, Crazy, Silkworm and loads of others asked the cast what advice they would give for young, aspiring actors. The thing that you need to have is a passion and a stubbornness and a desire just to go and do it. I think the reason that we don't see enough representation of different backgrounds and that sort of thing in the industry is that the, that kids are told that you're not going to make enough money. And that's a stupid reason not to take up acting, so I would recommend it. I think if it's something that you want to do, sh let your passion for it show. Join the clubs that you can. Even if it's like, you know, you're just doing like theatre down the road, like, who cares? You're doing something that you love, and as long as you're happy, that's good. I wouldn't be anything without all the experiences that I'd had in all those theatre groups and all the, that those are those where you practice and learn and, and then you're doing it essentially because you enjoy it, not rather than wanting to just become famous. Whatever dream you have, do your, do your dream. Memorise it and do it. Thank you guys. That's a wrap everyone. Thank you very much. We'll see you all again tomorrow morning. Thank you. It's hard work making Millie in between, but it's also a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> That's horrible. Oh. <laughs> 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 But for Millie Inners, the day is not quite done. She's got to learn 10 pages of script so that she's ready to do it all again tomorrow. I think Millie In Between connects with millions of people and I have people messaging me saying, this is exactly like my family or my mum and dad are going through the same thing. Real life is full of a mixture of tears and laughter and that's what we're trying to represent in this show. In no way is the show kind of dumbed down for kids. You have all that like emotional stuff as well as all this comedy. It's like a really, really nice balance. Final question from Amethyst Sewing Clownfish. Where do you see yourself in 10 years time? I'm obviously wanting to take time out for school and exams. And if I want to go to university or drama school or whatever it is I find myself doing. But um, I think I will always go back to acting no matter what I do in between. I really love it and I wouldn't change it for the world. You've all seen what it takes to make Millie in between, but this episode couldn't have happened without all of you lot. So, for sending in your brilliant questions, thank you to Lime Kite Primrose, Scarlet Fizzy Satsuma, Purple Talkative Mango, Lila Crispy Zook. Do you know what? There's loads of you. Just, just read it for yourself.
you have made this episode of Million Between extra special and I hope we've shown you guys a little bit about what it's like behind the scenes. Now I've had the best day ever, but I must admit, I am more tired than I think I've ever been in my entire life. So I think that's a wrap. Roll the credits.